How do you measure lost time? Do you look at the skin? The eyes? Is it in the strands of gray? Or the hands? For Tony Wright, all of this time is the story. What about Philly? Football? Family? And finding faith against the greatest odds? October 20th, 1991. It was early afternoon. The football game was about to come on. And back then, every Sunday, that's all I did was watch the games. My son was sitting on the floor playing with his toys. Uh, I was looking at the TV, and out of nowhere, all hell broke loose. Philadelphia police officers showed up looking for answers about a murder from the night before. They took Tony in for hour after hour of questioning. I repeated the same thing over and over again. It wasn't me. I was in there crying like a baby for my mother. We talking about murder in the first degree. That's scary. It was an officer standing in the back of me, pressing down on my neck, and one almost nose to nose with me. I feared for my life at that time. So whatever they told me to do, I did. And they said I can go home if I signed these papers. Tony signed a confession written by the officer stating that he had raped and murdered an elderly woman. Police also testified that they found blood-stained clothes in his home. He narrowly missed the death penalty before being sentenced to life in prison. You empty, you numb. Life, what does that mean? You 20 years old. It was the worst of times for me. But the only thing I could think about was my son. A life sentence meant leaving behind his four-year-old son, Anthony Wright Jr. I believe my dad was innocent. I was up there every weekend for me to be in the room with my dad for an hour. And that hour felt like seconds. We just lose ourselves in each other in our conversation. And the main topic of conversation was football. Football is my first love. I like the way the grass smell. Put them cleats on, put that ball in my hand. Before I was big enough to start playing football, and he would tell me about things that he did, like, tell me about football, how good he is and stuff. So and I always wondered that for me, I started using that as a plateau to like reach my dad. Knowing that he was, you know, watching me, I always wanted to stand out by making a big play. What numbers he got on 48? Yeah, I mean, everybody used to watch so we could see if we can get a glimpse of him. It was crazy. Like, yo, that's my son right here. I just wanted a positive light to shine, you know, through me on him. Through football, there were no walls, no distance. While his son starred at Ben Franklin High School in Philly, Tony played, too, in the inmates' football league at Greaterford Prison, just an hour away. The years passed, and their bond remained intact. He used to send me pictures of him working out. That was our back and forth thing, and him motivating me, and I was trying to motivate him. I can't begin to tell you how I would have been able to function if it wasn't for those two things. Football and my son, both were my sanctuary. Both was my escape. I used to tell him, Every play, sweep, let's go behind me. My pull, my lead, follow me. And everybody used to love it. <laughs> he reminded me a lot of Ray Lewis. You know, just a big vocal linebacker that took charge when he was on the field. Uh, I don't know if that was just to say, hey, I'm, I'm here, I shouldn't be here, but I'm gonna do what I can to do this thing. We used to sleep in our equipment, our cleats. Couldn't wait to get out there. It was a way for me to channel frustration in a positive way. Off the field, Tony tackled the case against him. Year after year, he maintained his innocence and followed a tedious routine. I would write 10 letters a week to any legal institution I could find. My name is Anthony Wright. I'm writing. And I said, I sent these people a letter. Did they get my letter? 
In 1998, one of Tony's letters reached the Innocence Project in New York City, which uses DNA evidence to get justice for the wrongfully convicted. The firm agreed to help, but it was just the beginning of a grueling legal battle. It was seven years before we got to his case. We have thousands of requests. What was really unusual about Tony's, in comparison to a lot of the other cases, is Tony was actually suggesting that it wasn't just a case of mistake or error. Um, he was asserting that the police had framed him. In 2005, Tony's lawyers wanted the courts to test the DNA from the scene of the 1991 murder, convinced that it would prove Tony's innocence. Time after time, this request was denied due to the confession Tony said he was forced to sign. As his lawyers appealed, he waited. It was torture. DNA says two things, yes or no. It's no in-between. If you sure I'm the guy that committed this crime, why you deny me this test? Finally, in 2011, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled in favor of Tony and allowed the DNA testing. It proved that Tony did not match any of the DNA at the scene and pointed to a different man. Instead of setting Tony free, the Philadelphia District Attorney demanded a retrial. 25 years later, Tony's fate would again be in the hands of a jury. I've never felt so secure about anything in my life like I felt going to trial. I couldn't wait for that day. After hearing all the evidence and really paying attention to what was being said in that courtroom, each of us realized this man was not guilty. First degree murder, second degree murder, third degree murder, rape, etc. down the line, not guilty. Not guilty. And I screamed so loud, it felt like a million pounds was lifted off my back. After that, you can hear my son in the back sobbing. Not only like my dad was free, but I was free. Never again. Never would I ever have to come here ever again. On August 23rd, 2016, after 9,074 days behind bars, Tony Wright was finally free. We did it, you know what I mean? It's a day is day. It's a day is day. I'm a fighter. So many people turned their back on me. And so many people didn't. I'm built for this, man. Our criminal justice system does need to be revised. There are situations that should not be. How many people have been unjustly incarcerated based on false evidence? It is really a problem, especially when you're poor and you are black, and you have no one to vouch for you. I've been practicing Islam for a long time. I worship the most forgiving God. So if, if he forgive, who am I to hold a grudge? And if somebody want to apologize, apologize to my son. He's alive. He's here. I'm alive. I'm here. We have a future, a big future ahead of us. I don't want to make up lost time. We cherishing this time, this moment, now.